Good morning. So we've made it back to the van. Flew in super late last night. I got back to the van around 10 p.m. and I just didn't feel like driving anywhere. So last night we just hunkered down for the night. I was tired after flying home or flying back to the van. So we just stayed right here in the airport parking lot for uh, one more night because it was only seven dollars to stay here. We're still in uh, New Mexico. And for those of you guys who are new here and this is your first video on this channel, my name is Ryan. I live in the back of my self-converted camper van full time. I'm currently on a road trip across the country from Maryland back to San Diego to build out a Japanese mini truck camper that I will be documenting here on this channel. So we're over three fourths of the way through a journey from Maryland to San Diego. Got a few more days of driving, about 11 hours until we're back in sunny California. Get myself unpacked because I flew home for the weekend to uh, deal with some issues with the shipment of that mini truck and then we're hitting the road. So everything's packed. I think we're ready to go. But I didn't really leave myself a lot of food before I flew home because I don't want to leave a bunch of food in the van. But I should have enough. Make myself some breakfast today and then we'll just have to stop somewhere on the way to where we're going today and pick up some more food. But I've got just enough for a simple breakfast sandwich though. So. But one thing that I've realized about living in a van for the last two years and going through two summers and two winters is that I genuinely really overestimated how bad winters were going to be because although I do have my diesel heater to keep me warm whenever it's super super cold I really don't feel the need to turn it on even when it's like 25 20 degrees outside 10 degrees below freezing I just get under my blanket and it's not really that crazy of a blanket it's literally just an Ikea comforter and a sheet and then I have that little knit blanket and I'm plenty warm enough most of the time the van stays around 45 degrees so I don't have to worry about my pipes freezing so I feel like unless you're going to super, super crazy harsh environments, like maybe Canada or even Alaska in the winter, personally, I wouldn't be really too worried about cold weather. As long as you're not someone who gets super cold like me. I personally like the cold most of the time. So I guess it kind of depends on the person too. So the one thing that I hate about cooking breakfast uh, at least in the morning when I have to drive somewhere, is that the stove stays really hot for a decent amount of time. And I can't really drive away until I put this like sound dampening over the stove or else it rattles absolutely crazy. And I don't feel like listening to it. So I gotta sit here, wait for like 20 minutes for the stove to cool down enough to put that sound dampening down. Most of the time it's not too bad. I can just sit here and enjoy my breakfast while wait for that. All right, I think it has cooled down enough. And this is just basically a piece of cabinet like lining that I throw down on here to keep it from rattling around because this glass top rattles against that metal thing if I don't have that there. But anyways, I'm hoping to make it to this spot in the desert out in Arizona before the sun goes down tonight. These short days are really starting to get to me. So I used to be unable to wake up late and still make it there <laughs> in the summertime, but I'm hoping we can still make it there today. We've been set free. 40 bucks isn't bad for a free night's camping here in New Mexico, but it is time to hit the road. So we should hopefully be able to find a spot down here just off the highway on some of this land over here where we can potentially camp for the night. Hopefully far enough away to where we won't be able to hear the highway. I might have to get out and do a little bit of uh, checking here on this road because it looks like it does get muddy up there and we are supposed to get rain tonight. Before I pull down there and get myself stuck when I'm so close to making it to San Diego. I'm gonna go out and do some looking. See what the road conditions look like. I guess worst case, we can come back up and stay right here. This is like nice gravelly stuff that's not gonna get muddy. I do have my new tires that I got put on from Alaska. So hopefully, even if it does get too muddy, we should be a little bit better off than the last time when I got stuck in a foot of mud in Sedona on a road very similar to this one that, uh, that I'm walking down right here. It looks like it does get muddy, but I mean, I don't know. And actually, it might not even be rain tonight. It's supposed to get so cold that it might actually be snow. There's like a 30, 40% chance of snow. Back where we were about an hour ago, they were supposed to get three to six inches. I don't know if that's true where I'm at because there's no real town to tell whether I should expect for this specific area, but I would imagine if we do get snow, it should be a decent amount. But this spot over here looks a little bit better 
in these spots. I mean, those are some pretty nice ruts here from when last time it rained, I guess. I'd honestly prefer this road to be sandy just because I know that this stuff out here from previous experience turns into absolute slop when it gets rainy. And I mean, you can see some of the less maintained stuff over here. These are some deep, deep ruts where people kind of went off the road a little bit. I don't know. It's not very hilly though. I'm thinking if we just pull down there, we should be fine. Just get a little bit farther away from the highway. If these tires can make it up a 12 degree incline in the Arctic tundra of Alaska in two inches of mud, I feel like they can handle some flat road out here in Arizona. And I would be a little bit less risk adverse if I didn't have to be home in two days to start this truck build. But right now it's just not worth it to drive three or four miles back down this uh, dirt road just to end up getting stuck. Right now it's perfectly fine. When it's dry, it's not bad. So I guess worst case I could wait it, wait it out for a few hours in the morning, let it dry up a little bit. But I'm gonna pull back in here and just kind of take this spot right here. But it does feel nice to be out here on some BLM land again, because back east there just isn't too much. And once you pass pretty much New Mexico, Texas and get into Arizona, there is a plethora of free BLM land. And that is Bureau of Land Management land that you can just pull off and camp on for free and there's probably a bunch more spots down that road that we're not going to go check but this is actually kind of a very lucky spot because we're in between two areas where you can never camp one of which being a national park or right next to the uh, petrified forest and two being the navajo nation so we are right on this small patch of land i don't know if you guys are going to see it on my maps but you can see that right there that little red highlighted box that is the petrified forest and that right there next to us we're just outside of is the navajo nation which are two places where you're not allowed to camp unless you have a permit. So lucky enough to find a little sliver right in between the two. Look at that view though. Looks like a desktop background, unless you can tell by the shadow of my van. The sun is already starting to set. It is only just about 4.15. So we've got about maybe an hour left of light. I think it's time to get cooking. And tonight, since we are so close to the Navajo Nation, when I was on my way here, I stopped by the grocery store and picked up a bunch of ingredients. I think tonight we're gonna make some Navajo tacos, AKA fry bread tacos. We've got all the ingredients we need for them. So let's get started because I'm hungry. So before we get started with prepping all of the ingredients that we need to make this fry bread and taco mixture, I am going to prepare my fry bread because we're making it from scratch. So since I left my van at the airport for a few days in freezing temperatures, my water tank has very, very cold water in it. And in order to make this fry bread, we need some warm water. So I'm gonna put some water in this kettle real quick for just a few minutes and just get it nice and warm so it's ready to go in the fry bread. We don't want it boiling, we just want it not freezing cold like it currently is. We got our handy dandy foldable, which I don't know if it was already taken or what. This is called the snap fold, but maybe the name foldable was already taken. Don't really know. I just know this company missed out on a great name for, uh, for their product. <laughs> All right. I think we've gotten it. So now in order to make this fry bread, we need two cups of all-purpose flour. If you want to be really authentic, you can use Bluebird flour, but they didn't have any of that in the store. There's one, there's two. Two teaspoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt that I'm not gonna measure out. I'm just gonna pour it in there. And that is roughly about a teaspoon. And then to that mixture, we're gonna add one cup of our warm water, just like that, and slowly mix that in with a fork. We get to knead this together until it becomes a nice dough. Flour this surface over here a little bit. We'll just knead this up for like five-ish minutes into a nice little dough ball. There we go. Now I'm gonna rinse this bowl out real quick, get that set aside, and we'll be good to move on to the next step. Alrighty, workstation cleaned up, bowl cleaned out. And now we can place the dough in here, cover this up with some plastic wrap, and then we'll just let this dough rest for 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. Bowl really doesn't want to stay snap closed either. The only reason I even somewhat like this bowl is because it's super big. And when you live in a small space like this, having a big bowl like this just really isn't practical because of how much space it takes up. But since this one folds flat, it's nice to be able to have, but. It's definitely not perfect. Now that we're done with that, we can move on to prepping the rest of the ingredients. And I'm just gonna go ahead and prep everything right now. Just so that it's done and ready to go when I need it. And I won't have to prep hopefully anything else after this. So we've got an onion, we've got a tomato, we've got some lettuce, we've got cilantro and that should be it. I'm just gonna start off by fine dicing all of these.
I'm honestly hoping it snows rather than rains tonight because it would be nice. Rain just creates muddy disgustingness. At least snow is kind of pretty. I'm also trying to be a little bit more organized with my cooking so I get less stressed out. So I've got all my stuff nice and neatly organized into these piles. Move that up to the top up here, out of the way. And this should be just about done in another like maybe two minutes. And I think while we wait these last two minutes, I'm gonna start getting the oil all heated up for my fry bread. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Need about three cups of oil. Ugh. Looks about right. We wanna let this oil get up to 350 and we'll be good to cook. Now that we've got that going, Let's get this fry bread prepared up. Flour the surface again. Go ahead and take our dough out. And then we're gonna divide this up into eighths. Roughly, I guess. There's fourths and eighths. Alrighty. Get these formed into nice little dough balls. Little offspring of our giant dough ball. All right, so one thing I don't have in the van in my cooking equipment repertoire is a rolling pin, so we're gonna use this can of beans that I bought today. Roll these out into roughly six inch, like, pancakes, essentially. There we go. Now we're just gonna repeat that process with all of these. And I'm gonna kind of fry them as I make them, because uh, I feel like that's the best way to do this, but check my oil real quick, make sure it's up to temp. All right, we're at about 260. We got a little bit more to go. All right, there we go. 350, right on the money. Throw our first one in there. And she is frying up beautifully. I don't think these will probably need to cook for too long. I'm assuming they're gonna be kind of like the beignets that I made down in um, Louisiana when I was down there when I made homemade beignets. Kind of popping up just like the beignets did. Uh, but basically we're gonna wait till one side's golden brown, flip it, and then repeat that process over and over again with all of these dough balls that you see here. Alrighty, last one coming out. All of them beautifully golden brown sitting right there. And they actually took quite a bit longer to cook than I had initially thought they would because I had to do one at a time. But I got the oven preheated, so I'm going to stick all of these in the oven for now to keep them all nice and warm while we finish the rest of this meal out. There we go, all of them. Nice and tucked away in the oven, staying warm. Hopefully they don't burn. But now we've got to cook our onions, beans, meat, and all of our toppings and get them ready and we'll be good to go. So I emptied out some of the oil, left some behind, and now we can add the first of the veggie color wheel. Get the onions in there. And I'm gonna cook these for like two or three minutes just until they're nice and translucent. Add in our ground beef. And we're just gonna cook this down until there is no pink left. Basically until the meat is cooked. There we go. Beautifully brown meat, some onions. Now we can spice her up and make it taste good. We're gonna add all of our dark red kidney beans. I already drained and rinsed these, um, so if you're making this, make sure you do that. Add those in there, it's just about almost a full can. Handful of our tomatoes, throw those in there. And then all of our spices. And for our spices, we need half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of pepper, freshly cracked, half of a teaspoon of salt, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, or to your liking, that's pretty much up to you. An eighth of a teaspoon of chipotle chili powder, and then two teaspoons of chili powder. There we go. Seasoned up, ready to go. Smells absolutely delicious, I'm so hungry. Alternatively though, you could just use a packet of taco seasoning, but I was kind of going for something a little more authentic here, so we made our own seasoning blend. It actually smells 10 times better than the taco seasoning blend you can buy at the store, so. Alrighty, this has been cooking for about seven to 10 minutes. Should be good. One thing I forgot to mention that I added off camera, I added a can of these um, 
diced green chilies into the mix. But this should all be cooked, ready to go. Now we just gotta take our fried bread back out of the oven. Ooh, it's so nice and warm. Ooh, it's a little hot. Oh, it's really hot. Ah, those look so beautiful. And I'm so organized today. I'm getting a lot of comments about people saying I'm not organized when I cook, so I'm trying to be a little bit better at it. But now we build. I'm gonna take the prettiest looking ones first. Start a little mountain of meat on each one. And then we can hit them with our toppings. And uh, one last minute topping that I made, I picked up some pineapple at the store. This is obviously not authentic. It's a last minute Ryan Audible. Just thought it would taste good. So got some pineapple, I'm gonna throw in one and just see how it is. But hit these with some lettuce, some tomato, a little bit of pineapple on one. Well, I got these little tortilla, red, white, and blue tortilla strips. Throw some of those on there. Some shredded cheese going on top of both. Dollop of sour cream, a little bit of cilantro, and I got this uh, Serrano hot sauce I'm gonna throw in there too. I wish I did have limes to squeeze on them, but I don't have any limes. I should have bought some at the store, but that would also be good. So you get a nice fresh lime and squeeze it right over the top of these. Finishing touch, some of this hot sauce. There we go. Those are beautiful Navajo tacos. It is completely dark out. I don't know if I mentioned that though. The sun has fully set, so. Spooky hours have started, which is why the door has been closed. I'm very excited to give these things a try. I'm not too sure on the correct eating technique, which is why actually I made one of these into the rough shape of a taco shell to see if that'd be any better for kind of like mobile eating. The rest of them are just kind of in these plates. But, so crispy. Anyways, cheers. Wow. That fry bread is really good. It's pretty good. And this is kind of one of those recipes if you're not going for the full authentic vibe or you're not trying to make at least what I read online is an authentic Navajo taco. It probably isn't fully authentic. So someone will probably comment that and let me know. But with this recipe, if you're gonna make it at home, the good thing about it is it's like completely customizable. Almost anything would be good on top of these fry bread shells. They're very neutral, pretty much do whatever you want. And I did have a really good idea. I don't know if this is uh, something that is typically done with these fry breads, but the taste of them is very neutral. So I think after I'm done here with dinner, I'm gonna see if I can turn one of these into kind of like a dessert cookie type thing. For now, it's getting kind of late. These took a lot longer to cook than I thought they would because I had to do each of these fry breads one at a time. I'm just gonna finish a few of these. And also, if I had to give this a rating, I'm gonna be honest, I expected these things to shatter and fall apart right when I took my first bite, but they do hold together pretty well, so it makes for really easy eating. So that's a little bit of bonus points. I'd say overall, this is just a solid 6.9 out of 10. I think you could really uh, add some more stuff, make it different and turn it into a 10. Either way, it's very tasty. Really good option for dinner, especially you make a bunch of these in advance. But like I said, I'm gonna finish a few of these, so I'll go check them with you guys in a few minutes. All right, dinner is done. The pan is all nice and cleaned up. At least someone is telling you my dishes, but majority of it's cleaned up. Cleaned out this pan. And I'm sure this is already a thing because it's essentially, I guess, just kind of like a funnel cake. I'm gonna try to turn one of these into kind of like a dessert. And I guess this would be a lot easier if you took it straight out of the oil and then tried to coat it in uh, cinnamon sugar. But I didn't do that, so I'm gonna melt some butter and hopefully that works. I also don't have regular sugar, I only have brown sugar. Game plan here. Coat this in butter. Get it all over there. Kind of like that. And then on each side, coat that in a sugary, cinnamony mixture. And then essentially I'm gonna do the same thing on the uh, other side. I feel like this would be really good with some ice cream on top, but that is our little cinnamon sugary dessert. Cheers. Pretty much can't go wrong with that. This little dessert is a great way to round off a uh, very delicious day in the van. I really wish I had some ice cream for this. But you know what this tastes like? Those little cinnamon twists you can get from Taco Bell if they added butter to them. It's exactly what this would taste like. I think that is it for tonight. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully we get some snow tonight. And also don't get stuck in the mud in the morning. So I'll see you guys then. Good morning. So we did actually get some rain last night. We got a little bit more than rain. We didn't get snow, but we got a thunderstorm and some lightning that struck pretty close to my van, which is pretty scary because I'm just out here in the middle of a field. Sadly, no snow, still some cloudy skies out. I think it still might be drizzling a little bit. Oh, and also I moved 
I moved up to the more gravelly section by the highway because it wasn't worth the risk staying down there 20 yards further away. Before I get out of here, I got some cleaning up to do. I had a little bit of a uh, snack last night. I ate some of that fry bread with the pico de gallo and made a mess. I do kind of want to go see what that road turned into. Just because. See if it's muddy or not. I would have been fine. Some of these bigger spots right here, maybe, would have given me some trouble, but this would have been completely fine. Ooh, it is kind of slippery though. I don't know. My maybe I wouldn't have. <laughs> got like a pound of mud now stuck to each foot. I think I'm going to get my diesel heater turned on here for a minute. Let it warm up in the back of the van. Clean up. Do my dishes and head out. So. As always, truly appreciate you guys watching if you haven't already. Think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.